There's a place you can get to without any sound It's a place where the wick has burned out There's a place at the point that's past turning around There is a place to be lost long after you're found There's a land you can reach if you follow yourself It's a land beyond hoarding your fears so to quell There's a land where the bottom falls out of the well There is a land where your worry and wonder can Your soft uncertainties There is room for these In the land of the seeking Draw a map without borders And see where you go In the cover of night Call a question a home the edge of the fences you're never alone there is a place where your worry and wonder are known coax your quiet questionings speak your soft uncertainties there is room for thee Hi, good morning, and welcome to worship. This is a good time and a good place for us to be together today. Please know that whether you're returning or this is your first time with us, we are so glad to have you here. Our worship service for today includes communion, and so in these moments before we begin, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for communion right where you are today, bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, water, and to have it with you as we get ready to worship. Today we continue our 40-day journey in Lent, uh, and this is the first Sunday in Lent, and we continue our series that we started on Ash Wednesday called Seeking Honest Questions for Deeper Faith. And so throughout this season of Lent, we're going to listen to the questions that appear in the text that we'll read each week. And if you pay attention at all to your Bible, there are tons of questions that happen between people and God, between people and one another, and even questions that um, we'll hear that Jesus asks of his disciples and those who he encounters in this week. And so in this first week of Lent, we begin um, where we always begin, which is Jesus being sent out into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days and for 40 nights. So if you remember in the part that comes right before this section that we're going to hear in Matthew's gospel, Jesus has just been baptized by John in the river Jordan. The Holy Spirit has descended upon him. God's voice has boomed through the heavens, calling Jesus the beloved one. And almost immediately, right, the Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness. And we're going to hear all of these questions that take place between the tempter, between the devil and Jesus, and listen for how Jesus chooses to respond in those moments. And so one more time then, as we get ready for worship, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need right where you are, whatever you need to make the space that you are in feel a little more holy and welcoming, whether that's just a comfortable place to be your favorite animal or human or simply a cup of coffee and to join us for worship today. As always, you're invited to interact with the service through typing in the comments, through the emojis, or for sharing our stream out there for people looking for a space to connect. And so one more time, I invite you to join me in taking a deep breath. And welcome, my beloved, to worship. As we get ready to worship together today and are seeking who will you listen to themed worship service for this first Sunday in Lent, I want you to know that wherever you are or however you find yourself today is welcome in this place. So that means however and wherever you are in terms of worship is welcome as well. So whether you want to pray the prayers and sing the hymns or simply follow along, along quietly in your head and in your heart, wherever and however is welcome in this space. 
And our worship service for today begins with a gathering. Please join me now in our call to worship. Listen. There is hope to be found here. Listen. God calls you by name here. Listen. There is love that abides here. Listen. God is speaking here. Listen and worship, holy God. A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never fails. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevail. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and on with On earth is not as easy. If we in our own strength could find, our striving would be loose. We're not the right man on our side The man of God's own choose You ask who that may be Christ Jesus, it is He The Lord of hosts, His name From age to age the same win the So let us pray our prayer of confession together. My beloved, if you are seeking grace, this moment is for you. If you are seeking growth, this moment is for you. If you are seeking honesty, this moment is for you. For in this moment, 
In our prayer of confession together, we admit to ourselves and to God that we do not have it all figured out. And that in saying this out loud, in speaking through our vulnerability, we are surrounded by God's grace. So let us pray together. God. All too often we treat your word like something we can turn on and off when it's convenient. All too often our minds are full of distractions, of interruptions, of noise. All too often we listen to the voices that tell us to be afraid, to ignore those who are easily silenced. All too often we refuse to hear your voice. So forgive us for failing to listen. Forgive us for getting caught in distractions. Forgive us for forgetting what your voice sounds like. Drain the distractions from our minds and help us turn once again toward you. With earnest hearts we pray. Amen. My beloved, even when we tune God out, even when we prioritize other voices, even when we do all the talking and fail to listen, we are still held by God. Our sins are forgiven. Nothing could ever separate us from God's love. So with joy in our hearts, please repeat after me. I am loved. I am loved. I am held in grace. I am held in grace. I belong to God. I belong to God. Thanks be to God. Please take a moment to share Christ's grace and peace with one another, saying, the peace of Christ be with you always. Yes, please take this moment to share Christ's peace with those with whom you may be gathered today and with those with whom you are always gathered across all distances and divides. As we get ready to hear the word proclaimed in our midst, we pray. In the prayer of illumination, we always ask for God to speak to us through scripture. However, when we do that, we end up doing all the talking. So today, in fitting with the theme of listening, we are simply going to carve out a few moments of silence. I invite you to take a deep breath, to close your eyes, and to listen for what God might be saying to you now. The moment of silence will conclude when I say, with hope. We pray. With hope, we pray. Amen. Our service for today continues with the word. This reading is taken from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work the ground and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the moment that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was clever, more clever than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, 
nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, you will see what is really going on, and you will be like God, knowing everything, all the way from good to evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, to know everything, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made makeshift clothes for themselves. Word of God, Word of Life. soul that's free from the sea. No need to hide what he says from what he means. Blessed is the heart forgiven by love. Whose every fault I could long covers up. join me as together we affirm our faith. In a world full of noise, we believe that God is speaking. In a world full of chaos, we believe that God is singing. In a world full of temptation, we believe that God is healing. Church, who will you listen to? We will listen to God, our Creator, friend, and guide. 
Church, what will you listen for? We will listen for water in the desert, for the wind of the Spirit, for the laughter of children, for the sound of open doors, and for God's voice who calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, quoting Deuteronomy, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, quoting to him Psalm 91, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him with another citation from Deuteronomy, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, quoting Deuteronomy again, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him, taking care of his needs. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one who goes to the wilderness with us always. Amen. The very first time I remember hearing the story of Jesus's temptation in the wilderness, I was a fidgeting first grader in the first and second grade Sunday school room of my church. My teacher, who seemed ancient at the time, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden, kind of ancient, but who I came to love later on as an adult, stood before us in her conservative dress and beige pantyhose, trying to get our attention, as she pulled out what I am pretty sure was a flannel graph board from her stack of Sunday school supplies. Because, you know, why change something that isn't broken? Anyway, from my carpet square at the back of our carpet square circle, I watched as my teacher slowly put together a wilderness in front of our class. At the far left of the felt landscape stood a harmless looking devil with a long forked tail and two devil ears. In his hand was what appeared to be a loaf of bread, which he seemed to think looked really good. Now, in the other corner stood a very manly, very white, and very undisturbed Jesus, who, compared to the devil, was huge. His robes, which had clearly recently been laundered by Mary, were flowing out around him in the wilderness landscape. And from the back of the room, anyway, it looked like Jesus had his finger up in an attempt to scold the devil for even trying to tempt him with food and power and whatever else the devil might have up his very tiny sleeve. Now, as you can see, my teacher began pointing in the direction of the devil in the corner. The devil, well, he never stood a chance when it came to Jesus. And do you know why? because Jesus was the almighty son of God, and he knew it. So the devil was powerless against him. He couldn't have really tempted him even if he wanted to. Now, my teacher paused, looking around the room of tiny students. Who knows what this story might mean? Well, she continued, when no one jumped at the chance to interpret this Bible story, 
This story means that as long as we know exactly who we are as baptized children of God, and as long as we trust in Jesus, we will always be able to refuse the devil's temptations too, just like Jesus. Now, does that make sense? Yes, came the chorus of voices around me, willing to say anything to move on from the Bible story to the cookies and purple Kool-Aid that awaited us back at our tables. And although I joined the rest of my class in stacking my carpet square on top of the pile of others, I remember pausing for a moment in front of the felt Jesus and devil and feeling as if something about this story wasn't quite right. Now, it would take me years decades even, to be able to name what I sensed that day from my carpet square at the back of the circle. Yes, it would take me years to be able to name what felt wrong. But as it turns out, the thing that bothered me all those years ago wasn't that Jesus eventually said no to the devil or that he remembered how that in the verses just before these, the heavens had broken open and he had been called God's beloved child. No, the thing that bothered me was just how easy the whole thing seemed. How quickly Jesus seemed to be able to defeat the devil and his temptations without a moment's hesitation. And then, of course, how we were supposed to be able to do the same. Now, I'm guessing if I had been able to name out loud what felt wrong to me at the time about this story, my teacher would have listened. She maybe might have even understood, but ultimately it wouldn't have mattered because at least within the world of first and second grade Sunday school, spending too much time wondering about Jesus's human side, and if there might have been moments in Jesus's life when he wrestled with who he was and what he was called to do, well, that would not have been appropriate, at least not for a flannel graph kind of Bible story. But here's the thing. It's exactly this kind of Jesus the very fully and 100% human and inappropriate for Sunday school Jesus that we get in this story. I mean, just look at the way Matthew talks about this 31-year-old carpenter. There he is in Matthew's gospel, hardly any strength left to stand hungry and exhausted after 40 days of fasting and testing. And he is completely and utterly alone, trying hard, I imagine, to remember that just 40 days previously, he had stood in the waters of the Jordan and been called beloved. And into his exhaustion, into his hunger, into his loneliness, walks the devil. <laughs> and he is no fool. In fact, he is an expert at knowing what it means to exploit someone's weaknesses, to ask them the kinds of questions that make them wonder who in the world they really are. Can you really stand to be a human being? He asks the weary son of God? Can you really give up being in control? Can you really find a way to not exercise your power over all the things? Can you really walk to the cross? Yes, can you really live with being human? I mean, Jesus, the devil would continue, who would really bat an eye if you just changed this rock into some bread? I mean, who would mind if you called some angels down to protect you right now? Who would really care if you took your place as the rightful ruler of the earth? I mean, you are the son of God, after all. And in that moment, standing there alone and tired, the very divine and very human Jesus both was forced to make a choice. 
to be powerless or powerful, to be vulnerable or to be in control, to be poor or full of honor. And although there is a part of me that wishes in that moment, Jesus had just chosen to be divine to let his might and power and godliness burn around him like some kind of extra special halo. Most days, I cannot help but be grateful that what Jesus chose was to be frail, was to be quiet, was to be human. Because you see, my beloved, that gives me hope. Yes, that gives me hope that during those moments when I struggle, during those moments when I have no clue what I am doing or what God is calling me to do, during those moments when I forget what was promised to me on the day of my baptism, yes, it gives me hope to remember in those moments that I am not alone, that Jesus too knew what it was like to feel that way, what it was like to walk that way and figure out how to survive it. And it gives me hope that he will continue to know that in order to be with us. So that every time we need him, every time we need him to remind us that we are enough, that we are beloved, he will be there to do it. Walking with us through it all until we are able to get out the other side and remember who we are and who we are called to be. And while it is true that there will undoubtedly be times when we will want Jesus to do what he refused to do in the wilderness. Hopefully, we will remember that while Jesus' acts of power, his miracles, his his healings, and his feeding saved a few people, it was his vulnerability, his restraint, his quiet willingness to bear the cross upon his crushed and broken human body that saved the whole world, that saved you and me, that declared us worthy of love and dignity and delight now and always. Amen.
Our service for today continues with the prayers of the people, and as always, I invite you to type your prayer requests into the comments of our worship service, trusting that they will be held by me and by our community this week. And so drawing close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Help us to proclaim your word and to believe we are beloved. We pray for the earth, protect plants and animals, and sustain those who work the land. We pray for the nations, awaken world leaders to act with compassion, mercy, and peace. We pray for this assembly, be with us in our Lenten journey and guide us in discernment. We pray for those in need, rescue those struggling, and protect all who are sick. We pray for ourselves and those we love. We pray for those who have died. Give them a place with the saints and encourage us by their faith. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our service continues with the meal. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. My beloved, if we are honest with ourselves and with God, we are all seeking something. Some of us long for a place to belong. Some of us seek permission to be who we were created to be. Some of us hunger for connection, for justice, for a glimpse of the divine. No matter what your soul needs, the good news is that you can find it here. So let us pause together to offer all of who we are and all of what we have to the one who fills us with hope and promise. And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of the lost and the found, we give you thanks and praise for day after day we look for you, and day after day we find you in the laughter of children, in the sun rising over the horizon, in the sound of rain, in the flowers of the spring, in the welcome of this table. Our seeking does not go unanswered, and for that we are grateful. So take our seeking for beauty, for hope, for peace, and for justice, and use it to convict us, to make us relentless in our pursuit of justice in our consoling of the grieving, in our welcoming of the stranger, in our feeding of the hungry, so that one more time we may walk toward your kingdom, never giving up, never wandering off the path. Amen. And as we seek you, pour out your spirit upon us and on our ordinary bread and cup, that they may become the nourishment we need to continue seeking you in the world. For among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, This is a new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it all of you to remember me. Amen. And so until your promised day, we will pray. Until your promised day, we will seek you saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our service for today concludes with ascending. And so a blessing for all of you. As you leave this place, may God bless you with seeking. Seek out the hungry. Seek the weary. Seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful. Seek the faithful. Seek God in each other. And as you seek and wonder, may you find what you are looking for always. Amen.
in the name of our loving God, who is always seeking us, go in peace. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon.